What is going on all you minties? This is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And today, <laughs> I'm gonna attempt to do a quick overview of these six books that just came out from Marvel at the Direct Market today on January 8th. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. The first book we're gonna look at is this art of the Clan Shalvi from Marvel. By the way, I wanna give a shout out to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of the book. And I was supposed to do this this Monday, but I had a wrist injury. So I had to go to the ER. Everything is fine, I just sprained my wrist, and of course I do that before my wife and I go on vacation this weekend. Uh, this is the art of the clan Chave, Chave. And it retails for $19.99. Um, he is the artist that, I remember I used to mistake him for Kev Walker when he was drawing issues of Thunderbolts. That's what, the first time I ever saw his artwork. Uh, this is a quick little bio on him he was born in 1982 um in ireland so and then he talks about coming over to america and drawing thunderbolts this is during jeff parker's years and again i used to mistake him for kev walker and i remember really liking his artwork back then so i'm not going to flip through all these pages because i have to go through six books and i'm going to do it as quickly as possible that's going to be a feat for me because you all know that I love to go on way too long. He went um, over to Venom when Rick Remender was on the book. Uh, here is the return. I remember, giving, I didn't even recognize his artwork and it could have been a different inker, but he did the return of Wolverine. And honestly, I wasn't the biggest fan of his art then. Um, here's some of the cover process here for Dead Man Logan. And here is the stuff that blew me away. This is during War Analysis' run on moon knight and i love his simple design to uh moon knight and these wonderful covers there are some covers here in the back and basically these art books uh, are just the art process and then the panels and there are also ads there's posters in here or i'm sorry uh artwork from posters oh, let's keep look in the back here for the covers so he's done covers as well uh the book is 112 pages by the way and such as Spider-Man 2099. That's a cool war. I don't think I've ever seen that. Warlock. The 90s X-Men versus a Cosmic Ghost Rider. Interesting. It's a cool Banshee. All right, so let's move on. Here we have Doctor Strange. This is The Choice. This is volume four of Mark Wade's run. The book does retail for $15.99. Now let's uh, go over this run. This, I want to say, is the final run before the book starts over with, uh, what is it, Supreme Surgeon or something like that, Sur Surgeon Supreme. Uh, so we have Doctor Strange coming back to Earth. The artwork is all done by Jesus Saiz. And let's look a little more through here without giving any spoilers away. And then we'll look at the back to see what kind of extras they have, including those covers. But again, those covers have a different colorist on them. And this collects issues 18 through 20 of Doctor Strange, as well as annual number one from this new series. That is some pretty cool artwork. I like the colors on that. I hope one day, let's look at the back while I talk a little bit about this. Here's one of those covers. On the opposite page is actual the ending of the storyline. So this is a cover by Alan Davis, Mark Farmer. Whoa, that Marcos Martin cover is beautiful. It's got Nightmare on there. But anyway, what I was saying is I hope one day that Marvel decides to collect this in deluxe edition format. They're strange in the middle. Um, because I love that they've collected, you have Donny Cates run and then you have Jason Aaron's run. And I love for this to be getting the OHC treatment as well. 112 pages, $15.99. And here's his other books. Trying to do this in record time is a harder feat than I thought. This here is Black Panther. This one should go quick, though. Uh, it is the Coates book. It is volume eight, and it can be a little confusing because this is part three of an ongoing storyline called Intergalactic Empire of Wakanda. So even though it's part three, it is book eight in the chronological reading order. Now, I've read the first hardcover, the, uh, this one here, or I'm sorry, the one that has that cover on it. And... 
Man, it was so good. I really like his Black Panther. Uh, he is joined by Daniela Cunha on this, and I can't flip too much through here. So there is an intergalactic war. I'm not going to reveal with who because I do want people to be surprised when they get these books. But I wanted to showcase some of the artwork. Then we'll look at the back for extras. Uh, the book is 136 pages and retails for $17.99. Now, Cunha is one of those artists that I think it really depends on what book he is working for that he makes his artwork really stand out. And to me, I think this is the perfect book for him. That is a badass, kick-ass picture right there. Uh, now, let's look at the extras here in the back. So you have some variant covers. Again, I can't show that last page because it is part of the story. There should be one more of these books that comes out. Here's a David Mack. That's a good David Mack cover and a Carnage uh, is the variant and then uh, this is this actually that's Ryan Benjamin I haven't seen his name in, on a comic in a long time that's really cool all right next up is absolute carnage versus Deadpool uh, this contains the three issue miniseries and it also has the Captain Marvel one shot so we'll look at that really quick uh, the miniseries is written by Frank Terry yeah and Roberto Polgi supplies the artwork and the premise is pretty goofy but it's what you expect from a spider-man and deadpool book which is starts out like that and uh, they're together and he's planning a surprise birthday party it's a ridiculous concept but i've always loved frank terry um ever since his work on weapon x i have enjoyed his writing and i love his take on deadpool because i think he's one of the writers that actually gets that voice right uh so yes through a series of goofy uh, events. Deadpool is now part of the Absolute Carnage crossover event where he is sent to Ravencroft to take care of the symbiotes because he's one of the few people that has never been infected by the Carnage symbiote and that's why Spider-Man calls him for a lifeline. Now let's look here. So I can't flip too much through this one shot but this is the Captain Marvel Absolute Carnage one shot and it takes place before issue 5 of Absolute Carnage so they do a good job of telling you where to read this and it's pretty interesting that it was um, collected in this collection now let's look at the back for extras so here's the Rob Liefeld variant all three of them together again I apologize I used I do these usually in advance and of course I end up hurting myself Okay, this one right here, I, I know I need to rush through his, but Clayton Crane, my God, that dude can draw. Then Mark Bagley, I always loved that uh, Ben Riley uh, carnage. It Like, the storyline was kind of goofy, but I always loved that design. Man, and I, this cover makes me miss Nick Bradshaw's internal artwork. Then here's a little bit of just more of the story, 136 pages. And speaking of Captain Marvel, here we have Captain Marvel Volume 2. This is Kelly Thompson's new ongoing series. By the way, I absolutely love this cover by Mark Brooks. Also wish he was a faster artist to draw the inside. Uh, so we have Kelly Thompson on art, Ana Poala Martello, and Carmen Carnero on artwork with Tamara Bonvillian. Bonvillian? Oh my gosh. Sorry, Tamara, on colors. So these issues right here uh, collect part of the War of the Realms storyline. And she is now on Earth. It's Captain Marvel. Uh, I think Maddie read the first one and she was going to review it. So I may um, just give her this one so she can review both books. Uh, so it has Carol Danvers back on Earth, obviously. And it is during the War of the Realms storyline. So the Dark Elves are here. Here's some of that. I just wanted to showcase some of the artwork. It collects Captain Marvel issues 6 through 11 of, like I said, the new ongoing series by Kelly Thompson. It is 136 pages. Gosh, I love that cover, too. Both of those are gorgeous. And it retails for $17.99. By the way, so not all the variants are in the back. Sometimes the variants are also in between story uh, comics. So let's look at the back for variants, though. All right, so I was right. <laughs> Most of the variants are kept um, right after each issue. So here's the two other variants. I wish that was a full page because that looks absolutely go gorgeous. This one's drawn by Ian Hewick Lee and Elizabeth Tork. Taking us to Loki. And the reason I kept this all the way at the end was because I wanted to talk a little bit about spoilers that uh, happened to Loki within the pages of War of the Realms. So if you have not read War of the Realms, I suggest you stop watching this video. Or, you know, if you don't care about spoilers, then by all means, please keep watching. 
Okay, so the book is $17.99. That is the retail price. It has 128 pages. It is written by Daniel Kibblesmith. Uh, the artwork is gorgeous. It is uh, Oscar Basaldua. Basaldua. I think that's his name. It just said it right there. I'm just trying to pronounce it. But anyway, it contains the reason why I wanted to talk about this last is because it contains a spoiler for what happens to him in War of the Realms, which is where he ends up dying. And towards the end, in this Omega issue, he is reborn and he is casted to Earth to become the hero of the realms. So it's like he has this new job title. So it does contain War of the Realms, like, in, well, parts of or material from War of the Realms Omega, and it contains Loki issues one through five. I'm not gonna say what Thor's new role is, but he also has a new Thor in Asgard. But Loki is now here in Midgard, and of course he goes and sees Tony Stark for advice because I think he sees Tony as maybe like the god of Midgard. I really enjoyed this. That's one thing I wanted to say. This was a really fun read. It was a really interesting uh, fresh take on Loki. The writer I'm not familiar with, Daniel Kibblesmith, but I think he really did a good job on this series. I couldn't stop reading it. Some of that reason was because of the artwork by Oscar Bas Basaldua. I believe it's how you pronounce his name. I can't. I know I didn't mess up Kibblesmith, right? But I could be messing up Basaldua. But anyway, I just wanted to showcase some of this beautiful artwork. Let's look at the back for extras. So here are the variants. This is a variant to War of the Realms Omega. Here's the Carnage Eyes variant. <laughs> the only goofy thing that I I, I, I kind of see people wearing now is this low key shirt. That's a gorgeous uh, piece of art. This one right here, that low-key shirt. I get it, still. It's gonna be interesting. I'm sure I'm gonna be seeing a bunch of people walk around with that shirt on at conventions. And you can purchase these books from CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself in packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. Cheap Graphic Novels Black Friday sale is continuing all through December, so there's still time to save up to 95% off thousands of books. Additional books will be added throughout the month, so be sure to check back often and stay tuned to CGN on social media to be the first to know when the new books have been added to the sale. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. We can also be found on Patreon and Redbubble. All of that information is in the description down below. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.